plaintiff, Pamela Williams, says the defendant was a product of a negligent mother. And when he was two, he fell out of a six-story window and became paralyzed. Pamela took the defendant in as a foster child and eventually adopted him. But she's suing him today for the balance due on a loan. Defendant Ricky Sterling says things were hard at first, but Pamela never treated him any differently and forced him to figure out how to do things for himself. Ricky insists the money from Pamela was an investment. Start with you. Well, Ricky, unfortunately, was the product of a negligent mother. He fell through a six-story window at the age of two. Mm -hmm. Blessings be to God that he's with us today. Mm -hmm. I'm a foster parent. I take care of very difficult cases. I was asked to come and see Ricky. We hit it off immediately. Mm -hmm. okay. So after I uh, learned all the different, different things that I needed to know, the medications, how to work his body, took him home, installed ramps, made sure everything was satisfactory for him. His biological mother was given 18 months to take parenting classes and get herself together. This did not happen, and Ricky became my son. He was with me for a year before he had to start kindergarten, and during that time, he fit in really well and got himself well adjusted. He moved on into kindergarten, and I'm proud, so I like to show it. Handsome <laughs> young man. Yes, he is. Unfortunately, in kindergarten, there are bullies, as there are anywhere else. And while Ricky was in school, a child punched him in the stomach. Don't worry, Ricky wears a protective hard plastic body jacket that keeps him sitting upright. I wish I had been there. The child didn't know he had the jacket on because his shirt is over it. I would have protected him. So there went his hand. The reason I say that is because I used to um, defend all the vulnerable kids Oh, really? In school, oh yeah. Whatever it was. If anybody messed with him, they Fabulous. come to me. Gregory Mathis, so-and-so is messing with me. What? <laughs> so-and-so is messing with me. So I'd come up and say, mess with me. Would have been great to have someone like that in school. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I'd been there. Go ahead. Well, after that, I began to realize that he was going to need his self-esteem worked on. So we was going to have to keep things up That's on the right. up and up. Well, 9-11, America took its hit, and that was the first, the second hit Ricky had to take because he had his major surgery, and that was to rid himself of the body jacket and have a Harrington rod put up his back so that he could sit up straight. I was, uh, it was a scary time. So his um, parents, or rather his, his maternal grandmother and family, God rest her soul, uh, came to visit him and they thought it was something to coming down to visit that one time because he was in the hospital for two weeks. But I left them alone to visit with him and then I came later on that day. But Ricky really surprised me because he said, they asked me, how often you come? And I told them, every day. <laughs> right, I'm his mother. I That's come every right. day. That's right. So I say that to say that Ricky and I got along famously, even to the point where he almost got me arrested. How was that? Well, when you do wrong, you get a punishment. And Ricky got a punishment one evening, and the family was going into the store to go get some undershirts for another child, so he was made to sit in the car. When we came out of the store, helicopters were over my van. Helicopters? A paramedic was out. A fire truck was by the car and a squad car was what there. What occurred? Ricky had decided that he was gonna tap on the window and pretend he couldn't breathe and scare the people next door. Say that you were locked in. he was in locked in, in. exactly. Mm -hmm. So when the police officers saw us walking up and saw he was Did Caucasian and we were black and they bent over and they said to him, do you wanna go with these people? <laughs> Ricky said, yes, yeah, my family. <laughs> so he was in there alone? Yes. With the windows up? To think about what he did, to think about what he, it was nighttime, and, and I mean, it was cool. It was, uh, he had to held a door open so some kids could go and steal the teacher's purse out of the class. He was gonna think about what he did. You snatching purses? No. no. I, snatching I was gonna purses. say, you. I happened to be holding the door open at the top. <laughs> oh, be, that's the same thing. You were an accomplice. <laughs> an accomplice is, is charged with the same crime. You tell me about yourself. <laughs> Um, all right, we'll start at the beginning. I mean, you know, I went out the window when I was two. Um, 
I've pretty much been paralyzed my whole life. Things have been, they were kind of hard for me at first, probably mostly up until through middle school. In elementary school, kids were always playing basketball or kickball and stuff on the fields. I couldn't do that. I had to figure out uh, how to do stuff my own. Um, eventually, I figured all that out. And I was able to do that through my mom's help because she was tough on me. She never treated me any different from anybody else. And she wasn't like uh, other parents who would insist that their kids join other handicapped people. She let me figure stuff out myself and how to do that. Um, I mean, Did you find other things that um, hmm. allowed you to excel? I mean, um, they may have uh, had an advantage in sports, and you could have developed an I, advantage I in had other areas. College level reading and writing See, skills by the go. time I was in sixth grade. There so. you go. See? Um, so you suggest that you were handicapped in that way, but in, in comparison to you, they were handicapped in yeah. those areas. So just a bit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So come and get to this purse snatching. When you start snatching purses. <laughs> that happened in like first or second grade. Woo, you are a young criminal. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, I mean, he was see, in trouble. if <laughs> you snatch purses in the first grade and you're white, then get off. <laughs> When I was snatching purses, they kicked me out and they locked me up. <laughs> well, all right. I'm glad that you were able to have the type of confidence in yourself that you do. What do you do now? Right now, I am an independent contractor. Okay. In I what do, area? I do, uh, I work for a filing service doing skip tracing. Good. All right, he's talking over my head, but nonetheless, <laughs> sounds successful. Yeah, basically I, I search for people's phone numbers and addresses and stuff so creditors can call them. <laughs> I don't know, sounds like you work with Snowden. <laughs> that guy with the NSA that has all those secrets on people that have been investigated by the government. Uh, or you can get a job with them, that's what they do. They uh, investigate everybody unbeknownst to us. Now yeah, we know all of our names are on that list. <laughs> but uh, uh, you got a great career ahead of you. That's your industry. <laughs> Let's get to the loan you're suing him about. Well, during uh, his uh, high school days, he didn't do too good in school, and it's not because he's not brilliant. It's mm -hmm. just because he didn't feel like it. So from ninth through 12th grade, it was just straight Fs. But then he was given uh, opportunity to go to continuation school, and that's when he discovered computers. And <laughs> you can see everything changed. A's, B's, C's, because he now had something he was interested in, the computer. I was just amazed. Thus, when he came to me and said he had found online a computer course that he'd like to take in order to get his own business started, I was all for it. He wrote up a nice letter for me, and he said, Mom, you let loan me this money to do, to do this course. Give me a year to work on getting the business started. The following year, I'll begin paying you $50 a month come hell or high water, whether I make money or not, I'll start paying you $50 a month. So that happened. He took the course. It was one of those things where you had to put in more and more money to get the best out of it. How much did he put into it? Well, we started with the 5,500, mm -hmm. and then he can tell you about. That's the total amount? Yes. Was it a loan or an investment? A loan. Okay, so yeah. you weren't part of the business? Oh, no. I don't okay. know anything about that the wasn't business connected or how it got to started. Gotcha. No, right. Sir? Mm -hmm. I look at it, as, at it as an investment, and when we uh, took the classes and everything, and I did sign a promissory note, the agreement that we had come to was once I started making money from the business, oh, then I would stop. start. I then I would start paying the, uh, back. Note? We make this easy. I never I thought I'd not. have to keep that. You don't have it. I don't. It was so sincere when he wrote to me, Mom, mm -hmm. if you would just do this for me. I got it, ma'am. Um, let him. Tell me. And so you believe it was an investment. Yeah. You don't repay somebody who's a partner. You all split the money. Hmm. So it sounds like it was a loan. Um, and as I heard you say, you were going to pay her back when it became profitable. 
Once again, you're using all the language that equals loan. What was her percentage to be? There was no percentage. Okay, so that means you would own it all. Mm. All right, it was a loan, young yeah. man. And therefore, I'm going to grant your judgment of $5,000. Good luck, continued success. You'll be all right very shortly. Um, because they got a lot of openings in the NSA, because a lot of those guys, <laughs> they're, they're going to get fired. All right, good luck to you. Judgment for the plaintiff.